Hi folks, today we're at the Twin Cities Auto Show and we're going to take a look at this brand new 2019 Chevrolet Silverado. I'm going to talk to you about its features, its wheelbase, its horsepower, its towing capacity and cargo capacity, all those things to inspire you to go out there and buy this vehicle. So what we'll do is take a look at this truck now and um, we'll... Rob. Nathan, Rob, are you filming? Nathan, we're filming the new Silverado. Okay. But the problem is, this isn't a real one. This is a real, this is the this Chevy Silverado Rob has this problem as well. I keep telling him he needs to change his glass prescription. This is the Lego model. It's made out of Legos. It's not the real truck. Oh my God. This is the Lego Chevy Silverado yeah, that they put together. You're not going far in this one. 334,000 Legos went into building this Chevy Silverado. But don't fear, folks. We did a review on the new Chevy Silverado. Yes, we did. Please take a look at that and keep following us up every day. And like us and subscribe to our channel. Thanks, Nathan. Yeah, get out there and take a ride. Hi, folks. I'm Rob. And I'm Nathan. And today on Two Guys in a Ride, we're gonna take a look at this beautiful vehicle behind us, a 2019 Silverado, and it is the High Country Edition. So sit back, enjoy the video, and come on, let's take a ride. Today we're with our friends at Mankato Motors selling fine Chevrolet products like this 2019 Chevrolet Silverado. This is the high country and today we're going to take you on a tour of it. For 2019, what's new with the Chevrolet Silverado? What isn't new? Eight different trim levels, six different powertrain uh, choices and this baby's riding on 22s. 100 years of truck building and 7 million miles of testing have led to this brand new Silverado. And I'll tell you, they even say the bed is the most capable uh, in its class as far as capacity and configurability, and you really can't beat this. Power tailgate. And as you can see, it really does haul. Lots of snow in there, but hey, we're in Minnesota. Cool part is, right back under, push the button again, right back up fantastic also like on the corner here you've got these easy steps to be able to get in and out of the bed and if you'll notice they're work boot sized so they're great for um you know people who are hiking or if you actually are using this as a work vehicle easy access in and out of the truck bed it's bigger stronger and lighter than the previous generation more choices so you can get the capability you need one that's built on the legacy of the most dependable, longest lasting full-size pickups on the road. MSRP ranges from 28,300 to 58,095 with eight trim choices. And with this, the top of the line, the high country. This trim level, the high country features LED headlights, LED turn signals and daytime running lights. There are also LED tail lights. The bed has been redesigned to be lighter, larger, and stronger. Rolled, formed, high-strength steel, featuring 12 standard tie-downs, available industry-first power up and down tailgate, and up to 20% more cargo volume than its competition. Available 120-volt outlet located near the rear of the tailgate, which, sorry, we can't see right now because we're hauling a bunch of snow. Uh, and you also have available lighting around the perimeter of the bed. And of course, we talked about the large corner steps. Cargo floor length is anywhere from 69.92 inches to 79.44 inches, and the cargo box height is 22.4 inches. Payload capacity for the Crew Cab Max is 2,180 pounds, Double Cab Max is 2,190 pounds, and the regular Cab Max payload is 2,250 pounds. Six different powertrains include a three liter turbo diesel, 282 horsepower, 
with 450 foot-pound of torque matted to a 10-speed transmission. There is also a 2.7 liter I-4 with 310 horsepower, 348 foot-pound of torque, made it to an eight-speed transmission. Another one is a 4.3 liter V6 with 285 horsepower, 305 foot-pound of torque, and a six-speed transmission. Then we have a 5.3 liter, 355 horse, 383 foot-pound of torque, made it to an eight-speed transmission, and a 6.2 liter, which is in this vehicle, with 420 horsepower, 460 foot-pound of torque, and a 10-speed transmission. Fuel mileage range from 16 to 20 city, 22 to 23 highway. Uh, no information on the fuel mileage for the diesel at this time, and it is a 24-gallon fuel tank. Towing capacity is 7,900 pounds to 12,100 pounds. There is a hitch guided guidance and hitch view camera uh, with available left and right side view mirror cameras. I'll show you that on the bed. Put that up again. And you can see the dual cameras. Also, there is a two inch receiver hitch and the four seven pin connectors. As I said before, the ranges on the wheels are from 17 to 22 inch. The wheelbase is from 147.53 to 156.95 inches. And ground clearance ranges from 7.75 inches to 10.88 inches. Now on the high country, you do have the chrome door handles and you've got the lock unlock button here. I like the chrome molding around the windows. I like the little spoiler lip on the um, rear window, help keep that clean. You also see you've got the bed caps and a neat little attention to detail is this little spoiler here. You can see it right there on the rear of the tailgate. I like how the uh, Chevrolet name is stamped into the tailgate. I like the design of the tail lights. Gives it a little bit of a motion to it. And then you've got a little subtle uh, fender flaring. And then right around the wheel opening, uh, it gives it a little more detail there with the flat wheel well moldings. Love the wheels on this one. Beautiful chrome. Uh, the steps automatically come out. Uh, let me see, I can open the door for you. There they are. And they'll go back in in just a moment. There they are. Lights and turn signals in the outside rear view mirrors as well. This vehicle does have the sunroof. I like the attention to detail. If you can see very well the color difference here, you go to a chrome to like a brushed um, copper color or gold color. I'm not exactly quite sure what that color is. And you see the multi-reflector headlights. Um, here, let me show you this. A little vent here. That's for the, uh, to help the aerodynamics on the vehicle. Help move the wind around the vehicle to improve the aerodynamics. Like I said before, this is the largest displacement uh, powertrain. This has a 6.2 liter with a 10 speed automatic transmission. You can see the chrome tow hooks, a little chrome piece at the bottom there is nice. You see the um, parking sensors as well. Like the front end styling. I like the lines. I like the, the little bit of a blister on the, um, around the wheel wells as, as well. Of course, this is the high country, as we said before. Nice, it's just enough chrome, just understated enough, not to be all blinged out. I know, I'm sure there's aftermarket accessories that you can add to add more chrome or different things if you'd like. But uh, it's a great color combination, I think, and uh, just enough chrome. See the dual exhaust as well. All right, and today we are here with the all brand new redesigned 2019 Chevy Silverado. And this happens to be the High Country Trim Edition. So starting with the doors over here, you'll notice we've got a, a two position memory seat and we also have a running board operator which will cause the uh, outside running boards 
to come out and then extend to the back and also retract. Moving on to the driver's seat, you have a 10-way power, including lumbar. Very nice leather seating, very comfortable. Very nice little High Sierra written in the headrest and, and the pictures of the mountains, I love that. Moving on over to the passenger side, you've got your unlock buttons, your power window, and storage. And another 10-way power seat on this side, including lumbar. You do have dual glove boxes here. So the first one is a standard glove box. Second one is a nice area for storage for smaller items. Not a real deep shelf, but you can get glasses, uh, pens, all sorts of nice stuff that would be nice to keep out of this glove compartment down here. You got some nice side pocket storage. Down here, below that, you have a wireless phone charger, which is awesome. Non-stick, or uh, sort of a sticky surface again. Down here, same thing, a little storage area. You moving on up here to the center um, armrest area, you again have an area you can place uh, a phone. It's not a charging area, but it is uh, grippy, so it won't slide around. And if I open this up right here, pushing, you have uh, basically a small well that you uh, can store things in here. Uh, now, you also have more USB ports down here. You have an SD card slot, and you have a 3.5 millimeter auxiliary input for your stereo as well. Moving to the back here, the passenger side. You got, I really like this, this wood trim they have in here. Uh, standard uh, power window controls. You got uh, seat star. You have door storage. Coming up here, you've got seat pockets on both sides, which is awesome. You've got dual cup holders. You have your heated seats right here in the rear, and you have two USB outlets in addition to another 12 volt outlet. Oh, back in the back here, you've got nice leather seating. And you do have some uh, surprises in here, uh, which include, if you pull on this little lever here, you have the hidden storage. Okay, and that is on also that side. So you have two of those pockets. If you pull down the center, you get an armrest and again, some du uh, dual cup holders and some other storage in there. The seats flip up just by grabbing them and pulling, and they click into place, and they will all slide up. To put them back down, you simply push on the seat here, and it comes right back down again. Okay, so over here we have a really beautiful eight-inch driver information display system. So I'm just gonna go ahead and we'll start it up, and you can kind of see. I love how the gauges go to the far right and then come back. And then you've got your uh, digital gauges, uh, small gauges up in the middle with oil, oil pressure. Um, uh, you've got uh, engine temperature, fuel, and of course, battery. And you got your tack, and then you've got your speedometer down here. The 2019 Silverado High Country Edition comes with several safety systems, including a high definition rear view camera, lane keeping assist with lane departure warning, rear cross traffic alert, lane change alert and blind zone alert, rear park assist, stability track. All right, so what I'm gonna do right now is show you where to access all those little safety features and turn them on or off or set any adjustments. And so we're gonna start with the rear view camera. Easiest way to get that on, of course, is just to put it in reverse. And then we got three modes. So you've got this view, and by pressing this button down here, you can get rid of the guidelines or get them back on. You've got a trailer view with a guideline, or again, if you press it again, you can get rid of that guideline. And then you have a hitch view, which allows you just a better view when you're backing up to your uh, vehicle. And you got two different views there. You can see I'm switching between them, depending on where I touch. So a little more straight down, a little further back out. Very nice 
Um, I love that trailer hitch, and the the, the hitch. I, I like this is my this is one of my favorite things right here. I do I do some backing up to trailers and boats, and that would be so awesome. Um, and then if I'm hauling something, that would be beautiful to see too. All right, so that's where you access that. Hey, we'll put it back into drive, and let's talk about your lane keeping assist. So down here you have the lane keeping assist as, as well as the lane departure uh, warning. You can turn that on by clicking on it and it'll show you up in yellow or click it again and it, it goes dark and it's not on. Up on the dashboard, when you turn it on, you get a little display at the top of your dashboard. You get the blind spot warning detection and the uh, rear park assist. Um, you can see where Rob is standing right there and there he is in the camera. It gives me a warning. It gives me a visual warning on the camera or on the screen here. And it also vibrates on my seat. So it'll, it'll sense anywhere he's traveling. Now he's moved, it shows me two areas that he's picking it up on. And we'll do the same for the front. So that was the rear cross traffic alert system. All right, uh, Stabila Track, which uh, basically helps control the vehicle during, particularly during emergency procedures, is always on. You have traction control, which of course just helps keep your wheel from spinning. Traction control settings are right here. And again, you can turn those on. I probably have to have it maybe in drive. And then there it goes. There, there is no light for that one apparently. But up here on the dashboard, you can see it says traction control off or traction control on. The other safety features, uh, such as like the um, the front pedestrian detection and that kind of stuff, is accessible through your infotainment system. So if I go up here and I'm on home, I go to settings, I go to vehicle, and then if I go to collision detection systems. Here's where I can turn on or off or make any changes to the rest of the safety systems here. So forward collision and warning, you'll get basically three options, off, alert only, or alert and brake. And it's the same for all these as we go. Um, some of them are just on or off, but this is, where you, this is where you control them. All right, so over here we have all the cruise control settings. And then this one helps to adjust the gap uh, between you and the car ahead of you. Let's talk about the infotainment system. Um, I really like this, this uh, the trim they've put in here. They've paid so much attention to detail. I mean, you've got the chrome inserts here, and then you've got this really nice sort of a copper. I don't know what you call that, Rob. Is that a copper color, a wood wood tone? I'm thinking it's kind of like a brushed copper. It's yeah. Kind of it, it's reflected on the grill outside as well. Yeah, it's really nice. So basically, here are all your physical controls right here. So you've also got your power on off, and you got your volume. Over here, you got a fast forward, rewind, a back button when you're in a menu to go backwards, the previous step. And then you've got a home key. Uh, and then you, of course, have got a dial here that will switch you, you know, between, you know, different radio stations, uh, also different tracks, that kind of stuff. And then a little center button to click and accept. Um, so over here, if I go to home, this brings us to our main screen. This is a beautiful high definition, eight inch a screen and so you've got uh, your all of your basic things here you do have Apple CarPlay you have Android Auto you've got a hotspot it does come with navigation um, and then of course you can scroll through the screen there was navigation that was on and then you do have a trailering mode okay you can keep track of it says your status of mileage fuel economy and electrical connections on demand and with alerts You've got a, a setup custom hitching checklist, and then you can set your preferences, uh, such as tow and haul mode reminder and a, and the last used brake gain setting. So if we just go from here down to here for a minute, this is where your uh, rear brake, trailer brake controls are, okay? So very nice to have that built right in. Okay, we'll go back up to the screen here. So there are some really nice uh, features for trailing on this truck that, that I've not seen before. Um, you can turn on the rear view camera manually without being in reverse and just in sitting in park. Press my home key to go back again. Okay. 
and you can um, adjust your climate control from up here if you want. You also have physical controls down here that do much of the, uh, all the basic things. Okay. It is dual zone temperature control. And we'll go back to home again. Notice you have all these little shortcuts on the bottom of the screen that you can use as well. Uh, you do have OnStar uh, services and then the apps back here. Okay, you can obviously put some of, there is a little bit of a hard drive. You got little, just about eight gigabytes that you can do some of your own apps on here. Um, so we'll just go back to home. So, okay, you can also take a look at the vehicle. Uh, and there's some settings in here. You can do, you know, the rear seat reminder. You can turn on or off. Climate and air quality. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to go backwards a minute. Uh, comfort and convenience here. I can turn my reverse. I have a reverse tilting mirror on the outside. So if you like that, you can have it on. But you can also turn it off through here. And then the remote, uh, fo uh, remote mirror folding, you can turn off or on. And that is activated by the keyless entry system and your remote. You even have the chime volume setting. Rear seat reminder, you have the lighting, vehicle exterior lights, exit lighting that you can turn on or off. So just a lot of really nice uh, features um, that you can do here. Just, I won't go into all of them, but the one, I, the one that I will mention is the teen driver one. That, and that is uh, set to a key fob. Um, and basically you can, you can, there's a myriad of settings you can do. And then if you give your teenager or other driver that key fob, the vehicle's automatically governed by the rules that you've set. Okay. All right. So the, the, the last thing I'll say about the uh, infotainment system is it does have cloud connected personalization. So you can connect to the cloud and do, do some other things that you, um, can't do on other stereos. All right, this does have voice command, and the voice command button is up here on the steering wheel, and we can run, I believe, we'll try this, I believe you can run the navigation in the stereo. So we just push and let it go. What would you like? Navigation. Before we go on, please say address, place of interest, intersection, or contact. Place of interest. If you are looking for a place near your current location, please tell me the name. Otherwise, say, change location. McDonald's. Okay, searching for McDonald's. I'm finding more than one match. Because it may take you a while to choose, please do so manually from the display. All right, so then, if you are... Uh, th then you can just come over here and you can you can scroll up and down and get the one that you want and wherever you uh, click on then it will like a normal GPS just ask you hit go and there you are please proceed route guidance is now finished hey the other thing you can control is the audio so you can do your stereo and then you can do your phone and that's all run through that voice command and of course you do have a phone hang up button all right, so next, let's talk a little bit about the, the rest of the things that are down here. And there's not a lot, but right here you have a, a fuel economy saver. Um, turned on, this will automatically uh, stop your engine when you're stopped. And then as soon as you hit the, your accelerator, it will come back to life. You got, of course, your hazard warnings here. You can turn on your 120 volt outlet down here, which I've mentioned before, but this is really nice with the three prongs instead of just the two prongs. You've got your standard 12 volt outlet and then you have your, your two different types of USBs. All right, so this, this button here is an automatic tailgate up and down. And it's a one touch to put the tailgate down. And if I put it in reverse, you'll kind of see from the camera <laughs> that we're pointing straight at the ground right now. And it tells you that the tailgate is open on the dashboard. Okay, so I'm gonna put it back in park. Actually, I'm going to leave it in reverse. Hang on. I think it's will work. Now, if I want the tailgate up, I have to push and hold the button so that it ensures that you're watching and paying attention to the fact that the tailgate is actually closed. 
Okay, I, I can't have it in gear. It won't let me do that safety feature. So now I'm just going to press and hold. And maybe, Rob, you want to film out the back window. Can you just turn the camera enough? And here it should be coming. Yep. Gives you a little beep when it's done. That's awesome. All right. Then, moving over to the, to the basic dashboard. Okay. You have, uh, basically, this is all your cruise control settings here, plus your heated steering wheel right here, which is a really nice feature. Over here, this allows you to scroll through the menu that's in the main screen. So, left and right take you through the main pages. Up and down takes you through what's contained in each area, sorry, each page. So, I go right, you've got information. And then you see the little scroll bar. So, as I scroll down, I get different pieces of information. This does have a tire pressure monitoring system on there. Also, when you hook up a trailer, it will tell you the uh, trailer tire pressure and temperature of the tires there. Okay. Brake pad life. I'm, I've not seen the, like, the brake pad life before. I've seen the air filter life, but never brake pad life. Or Again, then you got your fuel economy. Average trailer brake. Tells you what your output is. Hey, I mean, this is some really neat features. Now, I'm going to scroll over one more page. You've got your general music controls here. Hey, moving over one more page. I've got navigation in here. So your turn-by-turn -turn display will come up on your dashboard. So you can see it right here and not have to look at your, your navigation screen uh, in the center. Your phone. Then, of course, basic settings here. For instance, if I, you got, okay, software information, you can do that. Speed warning. You can... Uh, turn that off or on, and then you can scroll up or down to set where you want your speed warning to exist. Okay, click it again to go okay. And then you'll notice this little sign up here in the dashboard. It's just kind of blank. That's a sign reader. So on this vehicle, you can ask it. Let's go to display. And you can say, I want speed signs and a compass to show up. If you don't want the speed signs, get rid of it. Just click here. Okay. I also can do the compass. And the compass is just a little north, south, east, west uh, letters down here. Okay, and then I go left. The left button is always back to where you were. Okay, and you can change units. Uh, there's just a lot of different options, but that's where you get to them. So there are, and I'm just going to go, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go uh, back here to home. And then I can set a lot, a few more things like the speedometer. You have a digital speedometer on here. If you want that off, you can take that off. Speed signs, time, fuel range, that kind of thing. All right, I'm just going to keep going back here until I get to the home icon on the top, and there I am back to my regular screen. Um, over here, you just, you've got your windshield wiper controls, your turn signals, sprayer. Um, over here on the far left, so... This one here is your top is your like your your driving system. So if I twist this, and then you look at the dashboard, you've got some different modes. So I have got off road, sport, tour, or tow and haul. Say so yeah, I'm just gonna I'm gonna leave it just on tour, okay? But that's what this twisted twisty button does. Over here you've got auto four wheel drive, four high, four low and two-wheel drive. All right, so down here, you have, you've got basically your lighting controls. So you've got your fog lamps on or off. You've got your rear light in the, in the bed on or off. You've got your, you know, the dashboard lights are plus or minus down here. And then down here, you have the actual lights on here. So you've got um, auto lights, and to turn them off is what that little power thing is. You just click this, and your automatic light control is turned on, or if you click it again, it goes off. Okay, you can switch the mode over to uh, parking lights. You have got then full lights over here. And then down here, you have some work lights that you can turn on or off on the mirrors. So that is your controls over here on the left. 
Moving over to the center dash down here, here's your climate control system. And you can just manually rotate these things to change the temperatures. Okay, for each side, it shows up here on your display as well. So you can click on something here and change it. You can click on sync to turn them to the same, uh, same temperature and then rotate it from here. If the passenger adjusts us, then it automatically goes, turns the sink off. Okay, basic controls right here for the auto climate and then your fan control. And then down here, you have got heated and cooled seats. So this is heated back end and the lower seat. This is just a heated back. And then this is the, the, uh, the cooled seat right here. Okay, same thing on the passenger side right here. So the last button we have to talk about is this one. And it's a really cool feature. If you push it, what it does is it takes the running boards on the outside and moves them backwards so that you can step on them and get an easier and have easier access to the back bed. All right, so here I am in the back of the 2019 Chevy Silverado. And um, I, I, it's ridiculous to even talk about knee room because I'm like in a separate planet and um, there's over a foot and I didn't move my driver's seat from when I was up there uh, I'm five foot eleven and a half and what Chevy has done here if you notice is they've recessed the back roof where it goes over your head I think that's a very clever idea uh, so I mean there's there's room enough for a small airplane to fly over my head uh, over here you do have your heated seats um, Three levels each, which is just awesome. Um, it is the outboard seats that are heated, not the center one. Um, and then, of course, you have your USB uh, charging ports back here. And then your your uh, rear air vents to adjust. Overall, a very, very spacious cab. The uh, Both driver and passenger have uh, illuminated vanity mirrors, but here's what I really like about them. Watch this. They glow brighter after uh, like a second of being open, which I just think is a nice touch, okay? Uh, they are both telescoping, which is a very nice feature. I always like that. And then real quick, let's just talk about the top up here. So you've got your home link buttons up here. You've got your uh, reading lights up here. You've got your, your safety systems, SOS, OnStar, and so forth up here. And then you have your controls for your moonroof up here, which opens and closes, it tilts. Uh, and then up here, you have your rear sliding window. Which I think on a pickup is a really nice feature to have. And there you have the interior. Let's go for a ride. Okay, here we go. We're going to take a ride in the 2019 Chevy Silverado High Country Edition. You know, the, fir the first problem I had with this car, Rob, was when I sat in the passenger seat and I realized I could sit cross-legged and not touch anything. That's not a problem. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a huge truck on the inside. This is, uh, yeah, oh my gosh, it's big. It's comfortable i can invite several friends over i'm loving it already and we haven't even gotten out of the parking lot well uh, nathan all your friends are in the car with you right now <laughs> i will be my one friend the only one that will do anything with me but you can invite me i yes you get one of these i'll invite myself <laughs> Oh, that the seats are comfortable. Um, I, I do have my heated seat on, of course. Um, Ten-way power on the on both sides, including lumbar. I like how the mirrors are large. They are, but they're 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 lower, so they don't stand up and cut your view. They're actually wider. Oh, no, they're yeah. very. I like them. Um, yeah, just yeah. They're long. They're wider, left left to right. 
Yep. Than, than I, I mean, yep. of course, I, I drive a smaller vehicle than this, but I really like that. Right, but in years past, you know, it was always the mirrors on trucks were always taller. Here, they're they're like not much bigger than a car mirror, it seems like, but they're wider, so they give you a better view uh, behind you uh, and, a, and a wider view of behind you of what's going on. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, it is. It is really nice. I like the dual zone type climate control. Rob has set a has set his climate control system at frosty, <laughs> and I have mine on desert. So we're we're, we're going to give that climate control system a workout. Well, you really sit up here. I mean, we're going by as like some jeeps and stuff, and whew, I am uh, I'm up higher. Oh boy. This is a comfortable vehicle. I tell nice, you, not, nice ride. Nice. Um, oh, you set that speed limit at 56, and I'm doing. 56, I must have gone so, over. <laughs> so yeah, ding at you there. There we go. Not sure if you can see that on the GoPro. So you know the the, the front of the dashboard, you know, is a really you know it's sort of a soft touch, and then the top of it is more of a hard plastic. But the fit and finish is really really nice. It's very tight. And the word that keeps coming back to my mind is cavernous. It's right. just everything is big. Your right. seating area, your feet area, your storage area, the center console area. I got to say, I love that HD screen. Uh, it's just really crystal clear. You can tell a big difference on that because a you lot can. of vehicles, you know, even just a couple years old, uh, the graphics, they look a little fuzzy. And that is as nice as some of the current... Um, pads out there or phones out there as far as the screen and the resolution yeah, it, it, it is sharp it is really nice some sort okay so you did this to me on a previous ride i don't think i'm gonna let you drive at all and i'm just gonna keep going um you drove your vehicle to the dealership today so i'm not really worried yeah. about that you can just leave it and we're just gonna keep headed south well mexico is like 28 hours from here okay. so if we head that way we'll get warmer maybe uh, it'll be warmer and we can just sit back and cruise. Did you bring your wallet? We're going to need gas eventually. But yeah, speaking man. of which, this has, what, a 26-gallon tank? 24 gallon. 24-gallon. 24 24-gallon. 24 gallon. Okay. And so up to 23 miles to the gallon on the highway. Uh, and, and, again, this is the 410-horsepower uh, 6.2 liter. That's yeah, a massive engine. Wow. All right, begrudgingly, I'm pulling to the side here to let Nathan uh, take a turn at riding and driving. Uh, I'm going to ride. And... Uh, Lots of snow banks to go in. Yeah, I didn't. Did I get you close enough over there to a snow bank? Okay. <laughs> he, he pulled over so close I can't get out. All right, so I'm going to let him in. We're going to swap some. Okay, here we go. Nathan, your turn. My turn. All right, that was your turn. You that, that, that was it. I, 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 I yes. made a turn. <laughs> Pretty easy to it, it drive. Made the, it made the U-turn. Yeah, it, it is. You know, I mean, it's a huge truck, but honestly, driving it. Should mention that steering I drive. Wheel I, also. I, drive I, I have a small SUV, and uh, this handles the steering. It doesn't feel really any different. I don't no. feel like I'm driving a a huge vehicle, and even though I am. It's a nice, thick, padded steering wheel, so it falls easy to hand, and it's yep. easy to control and hold onto. Very comfortable. Yeah. And I like the cutout on the steering wheel because it's got the center cutout at the bottom because I usually like to rest my hand there when I'm on long trips. It's the most comfortable for me. All right, I'm going to play with the seats here and see. Oh, boy. Oh, these are comfortable. Quiet inside. You know, it is very quiet. Wow. I don't really... I mean, you hear a little noise, but... And now we do have snow in the back, but that's not all that heavy. So I can imagine how nice this vehicle rides when you've got uh, a trailer you're pulling, or even uh, gear or things like that from the you know the, the yeah. home the home store on the weekend to go and throw a few bags of mulch or some uh, landscape timbers or bricks in there. It would really weight it down some more in the back, and I couldn't imagine how much nicer the ride could get. Yeah, I, I'm not you keep sure. exceeding the speed limit there. Well, it's, it's, it's yelling it, at you. Yeah, it's, we're in a 60 zone, and since I sent it to 56, they keep beeping. And the 8-inch display, um, high definition on the driver's console, again, is just crystal clear. You know, I didn't even notice that, but all the little gauges at the top that show your fuel oh, and yeah. your, uh, your uh, oil pressure, and water, those are all electronic. Oh, I mean, yeah. Those are all a screen. Yeah. They're not physical gauges. No. 
wow, they're but, so realistic and so clear. I thought they were. That, it's, it's really nice. I, 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 I love that. that. Didn't even notice that. Wow. You know, I heard some knocks about the new, uh, for 2019, uh, redesign with the outside being all refreshed and all new and they've upgraded a lot of things. But some of the knocks have been that they feel like they carried over the interior, especially the dashboard from the previous generation. You know, if that's the case, um, I'm okay with it. This is, this yeah. is well done. It's now, just, it doesn't have a, a big 50-inch monster television screen in the middle of the dashboard like one of its competitors, but what you do get is, is plenty good. It, you're not crystal sliding clear. I, I've, never, I've never seen a screen this clear. No. And it's no, the it's same kind of cool on the dashboard. It's a big giant tablet in the middle, but if you don't have it, there's nothing wrong with and it. This it's is, not sliding this, this at all. The screen is super responsive. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is not a problem to run your hand against it. You slide, it goes. It's just like your your phones now. With, or better. How quickly it is. Yeah. It, it is just really nice. Well, it looks like they've even updated the graphics on it. You can tell it's current. It's not something yeah. that they just made the screen nicer, but the graphics themselves and the layout uh, is 10 years old. It's modern. It looks as good as any of the brand new devices that you could buy from the local, you know, electronic store and stick to your stick to your windshield. Yeah, she gets up and uh, gets <laughs> up and goes. You. I can tell you that. <laughs> Woohoo! That was fun. Um, going back to the stereo for a second. You know what? What one of the things I think that Chevrolet has done really well is how common sense. Uh, the layout is right. Oh yeah, uh, you w see, you see, what yeah. you see is what you get. It is it's right. Very, it's, it's, it's very easy, easy to manipulate, yep. easy to use, easy to find what you want to change. Yep. Yeah, like you said, if, if if the complaint was the the interior wasn't redesigned enough, I, I think they did the right thing. I, I, I love this interior. To I me, can't. that shows they had a home run when they came out with it a few years ago, so they carried it over. Why put the resources into changing, you fixing know, something certainly, that isn't broken? Certainly the driver information area is brand new. Yeah. And I think the fact that the center stereo, the center infotainment center right. is also a high-definition screen. I think it's the design and the general layout and placement of things yeah. uh, was very similar to what was on the uh, Chevrolet trucks in uh, 2016, 17, 18. So that's one of the knocks that I've heard is they didn't feel like with the big redesign outside, right. they redesigned it enough inside. But again, if, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, let me tell you, folks, get in one and go for a ride. You will not be disappointed. Hey, I've heard that somewhere before. Hey. All right, we took that ride. So uh, <laughs> we're going to sign off, but we'll be back in just a minute. So don't end the video yet because we want to cover what we thought was our most favorite item yes. on the vehicle as well. We're two guys in a ride, so please subscribe to our channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, Twitter. Uh, what else do we have now? We have Pinterest, and we also have a WordPress blog, so uh, you can connect with us in several different ways. But you know what? Like Nathan said, take get out there, go look in some vehicles, and hey, let's go for a ride. Let's go for a ride. Okay, right. Nathan, so what is your favorite thing, uh, your favorite one thing of this vehicle totally? I know it's a lot. It's a lot to ask. Man, there, there are so many. I, 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 I have to say, I think for me that the, the absolute favorite is just the, the HD screen on the infotainment center and the driver's information center. It's just crystal that's two clear. Things. I'll let you slide. Okay, I'll let I'm you slide. I'm old. I can't count that high. <laughs> count it. <laughs> Well, so what's your favorite thing, Ryan? You know, I'm an attention to detail kind of guy. So actually, I kind of have two as well, but I'm going to narrow it down to one. It is Show on off. the fr <laughs> It's on the front bumper. It is those uh, little side vents by the front bumper oh, that yeah. help make the vehicle more aerodynamic by directing wind around the vehicle. And to me, that's uh, attention to detail. Right now. I have a very, a very interesting thing happening, and that is my camera is pointing straight down instead of up. Well, let's put it back in the park for a minute. Yeah, I know I've got something there, but why is the camera only using that one? It's like upside down. You're gonna see. 
in a second, that's all going to disappear. I think. Well, at any time, it can disappear. And we'll do the same for the front. All right, he's back there dancing, so I'm going to turn it off now. Yeah, but if you go to 60, if you go past it, then it, it stops. It won't keep telling you. There we go. Yeah, well, we'll see how that works. <laughs> it's only if you go too much over 60, well, a little lights in the back rear view mirror. Oh, that will show up, yes. <laughs> we don't want those. Oh, it said Highway 80. I thought that was the speed limit. 